Hello to all my queers and dears, and welcome to Adam Unscripted number two, where I'm going to talk about something I really would rather not talk about. This is uh, actually my second go at, uh, at recording this topic because I it's very complicated. So I'm Jewish. I don't know how many of you knew that. Um, and, uh, Passover is happening right now, and, uh, Tuesday night, my family had a Seder, and we talked a lot about everything going on with Israel and Hamas. We tweaked our Haggadah made sure that it was, made sure that the whole Seder was really built around having those conversations. I'm happy with how the Haggadah turned out, and I like the Seder. And there were some good conversations that were had. One of the things that we focused on a lot in the Haggadah and at the Seder were, it was that as Jews, we have a responsibility to side, to support, is maybe a better word, to support other minorities. There's been a lot of division in the Jewish community over that, specifically since October 7th, because not enough other minorities side with us. There is a significant, I mean really significant failure to support Jews and to treat Jews as a legitimate minority in leftist political spaces. After October 7th, Right after. I was spending time in a Discord server I was in called Aspex Committed to Anti-Racism. And my time there directly after October 7th has informed my entire reaction to everything that's been going on. Um, me and another Jewish person were repeatedly um, harassed and bullied and accused of supporting genocide. We were treated awfully. Just awfully. I don't hear this talked about enough, but anti-Semitism is a form of racism. The reason for that is that through the lens of anti-Semitism, Jews are not white. Even someone as, as white as me, <laughs> who has, admittedly, I fully accept this, benefited from white supremacy my entire life. I'm not white to an anti-Semite. Because I'm Jewish. Whiteness for a Jew is conditional. Now, there are Jews of color 
who get erased somehow even more than almost <laughs> just it's, oh my god the amount that Jews of color are erased is is ridiculous but as for white Jews or white passing Jews depending on the Jew you talk to cuz we don't agree on things <laughs> that's very Jewish trait, and we'll get back to that, I'm sure. But our whiteness is conditional. It is conditional on how people want to treat us in that moment. After World War II, white-passing Jews were granted whiteness. That's why I got to benefit from white supremacy for so long. That was the world that Jewish people existed in. Now, that's not to say we continued to... That's not to say we, we didn't face any anti-Semitism anymore. But it was better for a long while. Because we were granted whiteness... And now that whiteness is being revoked because anti-Semitism is reaching tremendous heights on a scale that it has, has not for quite some time. And the thing is that if people were listening, really listening, they would have known that was coming. The Nazis had a term called cultural Bolshevism. And the idea of cultural Bolshevism was essentially, this is not a hard definition because this is unscripted, but basically it was the idea that Jews were injecting progressive values into society to weaken the strength of German culture. That's literally the idea of woke as, as the Republican Party and, and as the, the right-wing whatever they want to call themselves these days but the the party of trump the the alt right that's what woke is for them it means the same thing it is the same term pretty much even though it's a different word so if you knew if you were educated on anti-semitism you could have seen that. You could have seen how Republicans like Ron DeSantis have been slowly integrating anti-Semitic coding into their rhetoric. You might have been aware that Charlottesville was not just a bunch of Nazis. It was Nazis specifically shouting, Jews will not replace us, and blood and soil. Now, Jews will not replace us should be pretty obvious. Every time you hear the Great Replacement Theory, it's connected to anti-Semitism. Transphobia. There's a bunch of... Trans, uh, there's a bunch of transphobic conspiracy theories that are also anti-Semitic, specifically that Jews are creating trans people to poison society. Anti-Semitism has been rising for quite some time. But it wasn't treated seriously. It just wasn't. 
it did not get the attention anything else got because bunch of people a bunch of people were just more happy to punch nazis than support jews nazi became a, a term that was the worst thing you could be and not explicitly connected to anti-semitism if you have called anyone a nazi that is not actually a nazi but just an awful person who has espoused fascist rhetoric because Nazism is a form of fascism. It is not fascism in and of itself. Fascism is a is is flexible. Nazism is one form of fascism. And you need to know what Nazism is. You need to know what a Nazi is before you use that term. And most people don't. They don't know what the specific idea, the specific Nazi ideologies were. Do you know what their specific beliefs were? It wasn't just hatred, generic hatred. It wasn't just generic world domination, like in Captain America. It was specific and targeted. Jews weren't just a convenient scapegoat. We were the target. And yes, there were other targets, and that's vital. J.K. Rowling was wrong. Trans people were targeted. Jesse Gender just uploaded a fantastic video that talks a lot about a lot of this. And I was lucky enough to be able to help out with that. But I needed to talk about this on my own channel because the truth is that I have been terrified in a way that I have barely felt because I have decent financial privilege I have white privilege I'm safe I'm big I'm a cis man I have a lot of privilege. So I've never felt this scared before. But I'm scared. I'm scared because I feel like I have lost my ability to trust that people who say that they are willing to fight on behalf of minorities will see their own hatred. See the way that their own anger, legitimate anger, but that their own anger is being pointed in a direction that is useful for the very people that they say they want to stop. I don't have a problem with people fighting with their anger. Like, anger is useful in a lot of really hard fights. It, it can be a motivator. But you should never, never be so confident you're right that you aren't willing to accept when you're wrong. And the fact of the matter is there are a lot of leftists right now who seem to be, or who, at least people who call themselves leftists, who seem to be so confident in their righteousness that they can't see that they're contributing to anti-Semitism. Not everyone at a pro-Palestine rally is a Nazi or even simply an anti-Semite. But the fact that I can't trust pro-Palestine groups to root that kind of thing out is really awful. It's really awful. It, 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 or or pro-Palestine spaces. Not even just... Not, 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 let's put aside rallies. Let's put aside, you know any actual, like, movement, but just, like, a space where people generally agree that what's happening in Gaza right now is wrong, and I am fully on board with that. It's wrong. 
it's wrong on a, a tremendous uh, a scale that is a complete betrayal of the Jewish people. But the fact that I can't have complex feelings in those spaces, at least many of them, not all of them, but it's scary to feel complex feelings around this, to say that, yeah, what's happening there is wrong, and you're also failing us. You're also failing the Jewish people right now. And you need to listen to us. Not just when we're saying the things you want us to say. Our, our pain is real. Our fear is real. The October 7th reignited Holocaust trauma. That's... How can you disregard that? How can you say Jews shouldn't be listened to after having Holocaust trauma reignited? I mean... It just feels like no one wanted to listen to Jews before. And somehow, after October 7th, the biggest attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust, people want to listen to us even less. And the Republican Party and the alt-right are more than happy to take advantage of that. They have taken the leftist failure to support Jewish people. And they have inserted themselves into this idea of, of supporting and, and fighting anti-Semitism, which is laughable. And it makes me so angry that anyone who even considers supporting Trump in any way could say that they're fighting anti-Semitism. This man, Trump had dinner with Ye West right after he was praising Hitler and Nick Fuentes. A loud and proud anti-Semite. You can't support Trump and support Jewish people. And you can't support anyone who support Trump. Who su you can't support anyone who supports Trump and protect Jewish people. And part of what's really frustrating is that Trump's only opponent, the only person who can possibly beat him, is Joe Biden, who is basically doing the same thing. He is using the Jewish people. He is using our pain, our very real, very legitimate pain, to fund a genocide. And now he's doing better. And he's ever so slowly, ever so agonizingly slowly, trying to do something about it. But not enough. And the fact that I have to vote for him in order to stop Trump, who would be uncalculable, blah, 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 uncalculable amounts worse. Like, I am sorry, we have to vote for Biden. We have to get him in office. It will not be safe for anyone in America except for actual white supremacists if Trump gets reelected. We have to vote for Biden, and it makes me so angry after what he's done. Not just because of the genocide, though of course I'm plenty angry about him funding a genocide, but using my people and our pain to justify it.
it hits me something fierce. And the protests on college campuses. I haven't seen anything about them getting violent. I know there have been. I know that there have been violent things happening against Jewish people, including on college campuses. There's been some real bad stuff that's happened. But the specific protests that are happening right now, I have not personally seen this stuff. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just haven't seen it. And maybe these things, maybe there have been stuff that's gotten violent. But Ultimately, they're nowhere near as dangerous as some of the some of the protests that have been allowed. Excuse me. They're nowhere near as violent as some of the protests that have been allowed under the name of 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 free speech and, and it being supposedly sacred. Horrendous people. People who are actually dangerous to Jewish people have been protected. Have not been arrested for simply exercising their First Amendment rights. Because ultimately, But it's, it's clear to me, and it became increasingly clear as I wrote The Limits of Speech Part 1 and Part 2, that the, that the First Amendment is sacred until it is not, and it's almost always not for the most marginalized people. When, when it's not sacred, it never seems to come down on the people who are actually doing the most harm. I believe in America. I know that may be like a, like a foolish thing to say, and it's probably not what you think I was thinking after everything I just said. I don't know. I believe in it. I do. I think that... I think that of... of anywhere in the world... we are the least likely to accept a dictatorship. And I, I think that's meaningful. And, and the reason I say that is because we've all been brainwashed to kind of worship the idea of freedom to an unreasonable extent. <laughs> Which, of course, we've seen plenty of people exploit, such as, you know... Uh, you're trampling on my freedoms by not letting me buy an AR-15 and, and uh, make me register it. You know? These... You're trampling on my rights because you won't let me say slurs. You know? There's, there's, there's plenty, of, plenty of bad stuff that's come from that amount of worship. But I, I think that the things that Americans have been told are important. Not the things we've been taught are important, because there's plenty of things we've been taught are important that we haven't been overtly told are important. Things like capitalism and profit. We've been taught those things, but we haven't been overtly told those things. What we have been told is that liberty is important, freedom is important, justice is important. And America has never lived up to those, but 
I don't know, it's still a promise we made. And then maybe maybe that promise was never intended to be fulfilled, but that doesn't mean it can't be. I just, I... I'm so angry. I really am. Because... On one hand... On one hand... There are so many horrible people. Really, truly awful people. Who are using the crisis the Jewish community is facing to dismantle diversity efforts that because the because quite frankly they're taking advantage of the fact that those diversity efforts never included Jews which is a failure of the left it it is it is a failure overall uh not just of the political left for not advocating for those but just an overall failure um and of course, using us as justification to shut down perfectly legal and reasonable protests. Um, or if not shut them down, certainly arrest a bunch of people on them. In them, rather. In them. I'm so angry. I'm so... I, and I can't do anything about it, and I've been reluctant to say anything because I don't want to be called a traitor to my people, and I also don't want to be dogpiled. You know? I can be called a traitor by my fellow Jews, and by, you know, the pro-Palestine crowd, you know... They could be, they could, they could be someone like Jesse Gender, who has actually proven herself to be a, a true Jewish ally. Um, same with uh, Finn, aka Swolsom. Um, uh, or they could be uh, swept up in their righteous anger and reposting. A bunch of really dangerous stuff and they might dogpile me for daring to say anything about this that isn't from the river to the sea Palestine will be free I'm so tired, and I'm so scared. And I feel really abandoned by a lot of people who should have had my people's back. I left Apex, to anti Apex Against Anti-Racism eventually. I did my best to stay calm, try and make reasonable arguments, express complex feelings, have important discussions. But eventually, I was just getting harassed every day. And people were spreading misinformation. I didn't even know I still, in many ways, don't know what's misinformation and what's just evidence and what's information and what's... And frankly, uh, I feel very uncomfortable because I think a lot of people are far too confident in that they know what's not misinformation. I've seen people argue that the TikTok ban, which I am not really in support of. I've seen people argue that that's, that's to, to shut down um, 
That, that that's to shut down, like, evidence. Like I I know that there has been a lot of important video that has been spread on TikTok concerning what's happening in Gaza. But like. And I think I'll have another Adam Unscripted at some point actually talking about the ban and my thoughts on it. But I feel like it's relevant to this one to specifically say, no, like maybe it's useful for them to, to try and get a handle on some of that. But, but quite frankly, okay, discussions around banning TikTok happened way before October 7th. The Biden administration and... Everyone else in the government, well, not everyone else, but a lot of people in the government just really don't like China. They hate China. Even a tangential possible relationship between TikTok and China is too much for them. And there is some evidence to China having access to uh, American data in a way that should admittedly, be dealt with in some way. But there is tremendous hypocrisy because they're also, like, the government is not doing anything about data brokers or about Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg or anyone else who has been, uh, you know, vacuuming up our data for their own profit. Um, but, like, I need to make clear that the banning of TikTok is not about Gaza. It's about China. If it does something concerning information about Gaza, that might be a bonus for them. But conversations around whether TikTok should should go away completely, let's call it that, started, and the arguments that have been made specifically for what has just happened, those started a long time ago. And that's the kind of like, there are conspiracies being spread. Do you know, do you know how easy it would be for an anti-Semite to look at a conspiracy like that, that, oh, Biden is shutting down TikTok. He wants TikTok shut down because he doesn't want information about Gaza getting out. And then an anti-Semite can say, oh, and then maybe someone says, Oh, Biden's protecting Zionists. Maybe they use that term, right? An anti-Semite, hell, even an unconscious anti-Semite, someone who doesn't necessarily believe anti-Semitic things intentionally, or you know, or is not necessarily a Jew hater, but has unconscious anti-Semitic leanings, right? They might say, oh, Biden is shutting down free speech or the you know campuses are shutting down free speech because they are trying to protect zionists and maybe in their brains they connect the term zionists and the term jews because oh jews are inherently loyal to israel a long-standing sentiment that has been floating around for a long time and unfortunately people like netanyahu and even the ADL, who, which is a complex organization with a complex history, has done some good things, and obviously they, they have been saying some not-so-great stuff about how criticism of Israel and Israel's actions is inherently anti-Semitic, that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitic, and it's a whole disaster. But the idea that if Biden is doing these things and if and if campuses are, are, are violating these rights these fundamental rights of people making exceptions for those to to cross to, to basically do what should be unconstitutional in a lot of cases 
Um, or at least to attempt to do things like that. Um, or maybe, if, if not blatantly un unconstitutional, certainly verging on, like, this kind of thing is supposed to not be the, is supposed to not be the norm, at least according to our laws. And, oh, look, they're doing it because they support Zionism, which means they support Israel, which means they support Jews. Oh, Jews are in charge. Jews are determining what speech is allowed. These conspiracies are so easy for people. And anti-Semitism is so fluid and prevalent. And no one's thinking about how they're using the term Zionism or Zionist. which is so dangerous. You can't just throw that word around. Even within the Jewish community, there's like so many debates about what Zionism even means. And yet everyone has decided on what Zionism means. Everyone outside the Jewish community who has not had any of those debates, who has not talked to us, they're all deciding what Zionism means and using Zionist as a catch-all is a catch-all for supporters of genocide. It's so dangerous. I don't really have a point to make here. But I didn't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about this, and I'm sure I'm going to get so much hate for this video. I'm sure that people will see me saying I'm a Jew in the very beginning, and they will decide that they should hate me. Because I don't have anything valuable to say on the subject. According to them, I'm not... I don't know. I don't think this video will go over well. But I had to say something because because my people are being used and they're not just being used by the people that are the quote-unquote bad guys they're not just being used by the Republican Party they're not just being hurt by the Republican Party Jews are being treated badly from all sides. And um, if you, as someone who supports Palestine, if you can't also be a Jewish ally, you have failed the kinds of politics you say that you support. If you say you hate Nazis, but you don't spend time supporting Jewish people, you have failed at the kind of politics you say that you are trying to support. This is one fight, and I am angry at Jewish people who have failed at expressing solidarity with other minorities. But I can hold that in my heart and also be angry at people who have failed us. At people who get angry at Nazis, who talk about how bad the Holocaust was or anything along those lines. The, the popular opinions, you know, about Jews. The ones that are culturally approved. You know, the Holocaust was bad. Nazis are bad. We should punch Nazis. Violence against Nazis is justified. Nazis are irredeemable. All that kind of crap. 
And it's crap. It's crap. None of that is... None of that holds the, the, the reality of the situation in it. If you can't deal with that reality, that complicated, messy reality, you have failed at the politics you say you're trying to support. Jewish people deserve your support too. We are a minority and we are under attack. And you need to educate yourself on the conspiracies that are taking root right now and how you may be contributing to them and how many posts that seem like they're saying the right things right now that you may be reblogging or retweeting or whatever the hell it's called on that particular site are actually spreading those conspiracies or at the very least leave a wide opening for anti-Semites to step in we need to be closing any holes that anti-Semites could step into to use. I don't have an ending. This was a lot longer than I thought it would be, but it's... It's worth doing, I guess. And I'm sure most people won't listen to the whole thing. <laughs> and I'm sure that I'll get some kind of bad treatment for this. But hey, silence is violence, right? That's what everyone tells me. I can't just... I don't know. I've been trying to do the right thing, and I have had no idea what that was. And I have had... I have seen very little respect for that kind of struggle right now. Swallow your pride and do things that actually, like they may not be the signal to doing the right thing that you want them to be. They may be some kind of taking a step back and being willing to, to compromise and slow down just a little bit, just, just a little bit. so that when we come out the other end we're not more divided that we're we're not dealing with we're that we're dealing with an ineffectual and and awful president rather than a dictator So that we don't come out the end of an attempted trans genocide and find ourselves in another Jewish genocide. So that, so that, so that, so that, so that, so that, so that. Etc, etc, etc. I don't even know what I'm saying right now, but it just feels like people need to slow down and think and not enough people are actually thinking. They're just angry, and being angry isn't enough. You have to be thoughtful. You have to be kind. <laughs>